Which is to me, of course, a uh, very much more serious one. On the question of my picking up this psychic matter, curiously enough, my first experiences in that direction were so just about the time when uh, Sherlock Holmes was being built up in my mind. That would be about the year 1886 and 1887. So nobody can say that I formed my opinions on psychic matters. Uh, very hastily. It is just 41 years now since I wrote a fine article on the subject, which appeared in a magazine called Light, so that I put myself on record. During these 41 years, I never lost any opportunity of reading, studying, and experimenting on this matter. People ask me, will I write any more Sherlock Holmes stories? Uh, I certainly don't think it's at all probable. But as I grow older, the psychic uh, subject always grows in intensity and one becomes more earnest upon it. And I should think that my two remaining years will probably be devoted much more in that direction than in the direction of literature. Nonetheless, of course, I haven't abandoned writing. One has to earn one's living. But my principal thoughts are that I should extend, if I can, uh, that knowledge which I have on psychic matters and spread it as far as I can to those who have been less fortunate. <coughs> but don't for one moment suppose that I'm begging for myself to say that I am the inventor of spiritualism or that I am even the principal exponent of it. There are many great mediums, many great psychical researchers, investigators of all sorts. All that I can do is to be a gramophone on the subject, to go about, to meet people face to face, to try and make them understand that this thing is not the foolish thing which is so often represented, but that it really is a great philosophy and that I think the basis of all religious improvement in the future of the human world. I suppose I stand with more medium, good and bad and indifferent than perhaps any living being. Anyhow, a larger variety because I've traveled so much all over the world and wherever I've gone, either in Australia, America, or South Africa, uh, the best that there was to be had in that direction uh, was put at my disposal. Therefore, when people come along and contradict me who have had no experience at all, read little and perhaps never been to a seance, uh, you can imagine that I don't take their opposition very seriously. When I talk on this subject, I'm not talking about what I believe. I'm not talking about what I think. I'm talking about what I know. There's an enormous difference, believe me, between believing a thing and knowing a thing. I'm talking about things that I've handled, that I've seen, that I've heard in my own ears. And always, mind you, in the presence of witnesses. I never risk hallucination. I usually, in most of my experiments, have had six, eight, or ten witnesses, all of whom have seen and heard the same things that I have done. Gradually, I became more and more convinced on the matter as I studied year in, year out. But it was only in the time of the war, when all these splendid young fellows were disappearing from our view, 
the whole world is here and what to come up with? Where are they? What are they doing now? Have they dissipated into nothing? Or are they still the grand fellows that we used to know? It was only at that time that I realized the overpowering importance to human race of knowing more about this matter. Then it was that I flung myself more earnestly into it and that I felt the highest purpose that I could possibly devote the remainder of my life to was trying to bring across to other people something of that knowledge and assurance which I had acquired myself. Certainly the results have justified me. I'm quite sure I could fill a room for my height with the letters that I have received from people now telling me of the consolation which my writings on this subject and my lectures on this subject I have given to them. How they have once more heard the sound of a vanished voice and felt the touch of the vanished hand. Oh, <laughs> goodbye. I'm alive. Okay.